Hey, welcome to the first VBMAT session. And to present the first speaker, here are my kids. This is Gwen, this is Toby. Do you know who it is, the first speaker? Yeah, Ashley Martini. Cool, you met them. You met her last year, huh? Her, her mom, uh, when they were here for the EcoTrip conference. Yeah. Didn't you have ice cream together? Yeah, that was yummy. Uh, Gwen, can you tell us a little bit about Ashley Martini? Okay. Ashley Martini is a professor of mechanical engineering at the University of California, Merced. She has published over 150 journal articles in tribology and general scientific journals. Professor Martini also contributes to the tribology community as an editor of tribology journals and as chair of multiple conferences in the field. She's going to talk about nickel dope, molybdenum disulfide, dry film lubricant life. Ashley, the stage is yours. Yay! Hello, everyone. Today I'm going to be talking to you about nickel doped MOS2 dry film lubricants. This project is a collaboration between my research group at the University of California Merced and a research team at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab. So this project is generally motivated by the need for dry film lubricants for cases where liquid lubricants cannot be used. Shown here are a few such conditions and examples are very high or very low temperatures for which a liquid lubricant simply isn't feasible. Also shown here are some example applications where those conditions exist, including medical and dental devices and semiconductor manufacturing. Also in the far right column, you see an application where many conditions exist for which a liquid lubricant, a liquid lubricant is not possible. And that is space mechanisms. For this reason, dry film lubricants have been used for many years in space mechanisms. A recent example is the Mars 2020 rover which is currently on its way to Mars right now. This Mars 2020 rover is the project for which we perform the research I will be talking to you about today. So despite the success of MOS2 dry film lubricants, there are challenges. First of all, it's known that MOS2 provides lubrication via a transfer film mechanism where material is transferred from one surface to the other such that sliding occurs between the MOS2 layers. Therefore, over time, the MOS2 is gradually, albeit slowly, removed, resulting in finite life of the coating. Also, MOS2 is adversely affected by the presence of oxygen. So for space applications, even though they operate in space in vacuum, they have to be tested here on Earth. And as shown in the figure to the right, the longer you test in air here on Earth, the shorter is the life of the coating once it um, goes up, once it goes up to space. So the longer you test in air, the shorter the life in vacuum. One way to approach these challenges or to try to mitigate these issues is through the use of dopants. So dopants, particularly transition metals, have been studied for many years as a means of improving the properties or changing the properties of MOS2. As shown in the lower figure, there are many possible positions that given dopants can reside in the MOS2 structure. And some of this is a function of the specific dopant and the conditions with which the, the film is, is processed or produced. However, it is generally known and accepted that dopants, even at a very small weight percent, can drastically change the properties of MOS2. In the context of MOS2 dry film lubricants, Dopants have been studied and have been shown to improve performance. Examples of dopants used for MOS2 for tribology are tit a titanium, gold, and chromium. These different dopants have been shown to increase life, decrease wear and friction, and importantly for space applications, improve the performance of MOS2 in air, as well as at cold temperatures. There have been many different mechanisms proposed for this improved performance, including increased hardness, preferential bonding of oxygen to the dopant itself, as well as the formation of a separate lubricious phase. In practice, perhaps multiple um, mechanisms are at play and which one to some degree, again, depends on the dopant itself. 
In terms of comparing dopants, today I'm going to be specifically talking about nickel doped MOS2. Uh, nickel is ideal for space applications, first of all, because it exhibits very good performance at low temperatures, and therefore is ideal for the cold of space. Further, as shown in the table to the right, nickel doped MOS2 films exhibit sort of a general profile of goodness in terms of ease of use and application. Finally, nickel is uh, relatively cheap and readily available compared to some of the other options, for example, titanium and gold. Therefore, in today's study, we'll be talking about nickel-doped MOS2. Specifically, our study involved ball-on-disc tribometry of undoped and nickel-doped MOS2. The SEM images on the top here show the flattened burnished region and uh, small cracks where we image to show the MOS2 microstructure. We performed tests at four different conditions of pressure and speed, where high pressure is matched with low speed and vice versa. And this was by design to capture the operating conditions in the gearbox for which, uh, which was our target application. We performed two different types of tests. First, we ran long tests to identify wear life. So these were run until the coating failed. Secondly, we ran short tests between 10 and tens and hundreds of cycles to investigate the very important run-in mechanisms that potentially can explain the wear life results. So first, let's look at a representative result from one of those long tests. Shown on the lower half of this slide is the coefficient of friction as a function of sliding cycles, where the undoped coating is in black and the doped coating is in light blue. And you can see at the end of each one of those, an upward spike in the friction, and we identify this as wear life. We further confirmed that the uh, coating was completely worn at that friction spike, looking at, uh, for example, the SEM and EDS images shown here. In this particular case, you see two wear tracks. The one on the left is before the friction spike, and the one on the right is afterwards. And you can see for the one on the left, the MO and S signal is very strong and it's been and it's gone in the one on the, on the right. This confirms that the friction spike corresponds to the end of the life of the coating. The other thing we see in this plot is that the wear life of the nickel doped coating is much, much longer than that of the undoped coating at this particular pressure and speed condition. Shown here are representative results for all four pressure speed conditions. And you can see already that at least for the lower pressure conditions, the nickel doped coating, again, the one in the light blue, lasts much longer. Its life is much longer in all three of these cases. We quantified this as the number of cycles to failure or wear life as a function of contact pressure. And again, remember that the contact pressure is corresponding to uh, all, as the contact pressure is varied, so too is the sliding speed. Anyway, as we see in the figure to the right, um, the wear life decreases with pressure, perhaps as one would expect. And importantly, the wear life of the nickel doped coating is longer than that of the undoped coating, and particularly so at the lower pressure, higher speed conditions. So the next step is to understand why this better performance is exhibited by the nickel doped coating. Towards this end, we performed run-in studies where sliding was performed, sliding tests were run between 10 and 250 cycles. For these, we specifically focused on the wear track. You can see the small inset there is an example of the wear track evolving over time or over cycles. The figure shows the wear depth as normalized by the measured coating thickness as a function of those cycles. We see several things in this plot. First of all, um, wear depth increases with cycles as expected. The wear depth is deeper for the higher pressure, again, as expected, and the wear track is deeper for the undoped coating, qualitatively consistent with the life we observe. However, you can see that this wear depth is normalized by coating thickness. Therefore, a value of one indicates that the wear track has gone completely through the coating down to the substrate. 
For the other cases, the cases other than the highest pressure, although we haven't reached one, we can see that we are rapidly approaching it. We therefore used this data to extrapolate and predict the number of cycles at which the coating depth would reach the thickness. And that's shown in the far right co column of the table here. It's also contrasted with the coating life identified based on the friction data. And you can see that at all of the pressure and speed conditions, the coating life is much, much longer than the number of cycles at which the wear track depth is equal to the coating thickness. This is counterintuitive because we're expecting material to be removed, to be transferred from the wear track to the counter surface, thereby providing lubrication. But if we've already reached the depth of the coating, how is this happening? We surmise that the lubricious material is coming from the sides of the wear track. To quantify this, we measured the width of the wear track, and that's what's shown here on the figure to the left. And we can see that in all cases, although there's a quick jump in the width in these first tens of 10 cycles, we see a gradual increase of wear width with cycles, much slower than we saw with the depth. This suggests a mechanism whereby lubricious material is being provided from the sides of the wear track. So as sliding proceeds, even though the wear track has reached the bottom of the coating, the wear track gets wider and lubricious material is released from the sides, thereby providing low friction and much longer life than one would anticipate based on just the depth of the coating. So the remaining question is how does nickel improve or nickel doping improve this performance? To understand this, we looked at, um, we imaged the SEM, we analyzed our SEM images from the run-in tests. The top is the undoped and the bottom is the nickel doped. And these images are representative of many such analyses we performed. Consistently, we found that the undoped coating cracked, exhibited cracking around the wear track whereas the nickel-doped coating exhibited cracking and delamination. This qualitative analysis suggests that the reason that nickel-doped MOS2 is superior is because of the wear mechanism and specifically because of the way that it releases larger and potentially more lubricious flakes during the run-in process. So taken all together, our study suggests a, a mechanism, specifically, uh, our, our study suggests that lubricious material is provided from the sides of the wear track, so depth may not be the most important metric in terms of wear, wear life for these coatings. Instead, it may be something having to do with the width of the coating. Secondly, our results suggest that one means by which nickel dopants and potentially other dopants can improve wear life is by their wear the wear mechanism that occurs in the run-in cycle. Specifically, it appears that nickel enables delamination, resulting in larger and potentially more lubricious flakes, resulting in longer wear life over the, the course of the use of the coating. So in summary, I hope that I have demonstrated to you that nickel dopants indeed improve the wear life of MOS2 dry film lubricants, and this is particularly true at lower pressure, high speed conditions. Um, quite surprisingly, um, during our analysis of run-in, we found that the point at which the, the depth of the wear track reached the thickness of the coating was, was much, much sooner than the actual life of the coating determined based on friction. In fact, in this case, a couple orders of magnitude different. This observation suggested that, at least in the case of these MLS2 coatings in run-in, that lubricious material is being provided from the sides of the wear track and wear track widening is a mechanism by which uh, ultra low friction may be achieved in the long run. Finally, um, our investigation of nickel as opposed nickel doped compared to undoped coatings suggests that nickel doping and again, potentially other dopants may improve performance through a new mechanism, another mechanism in addition to perhaps hardening, whereby um, the, the dopant changes the wear mechanism resulting in larger and potentially more lubricious flakes and in turn, longer wear life. So overall, um, I hope, thank you for the opportunity to present our work to you here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, comments, would like to follow up with a conversation, please send me a note via email. I will look forward to our continued interactions. Thank you again.
thanks, Ashley, for your presentation. Uh, and to all you viewers out there, please leave your questions and comments in the box below the video so Ashley can prepare some answers for the live Q&A session that we're going to have on December 3rd, 1600 Central European Time. By the way, should you ever visit Ashley in Merced, there are two things that I advise you absolutely to do. One, her neighbor distills world-class spirits from sweet potato and rye under the name Corbin Cash. See my hat here. They come in these beautiful crystal bottles that are really heavy. Uh, by the way, Ashley, this one's getting kind of empty here, so if you would please send some reinforcements. Uh, so if you're there and you like vodka, whiskey, gin, or very dry liqueurs, then please take a walk through the almond orchard, orchard and book a tour to the farm distillery. Two, if you've ever been on a plane and kind of liked it, you absolutely have to visit the Castle Air Museum. They have like 70 airplanes there out in the open. They have a former Air Force One. They have a Lockheed SR-71. And possibly my favorite, they have one of the four remaining B-36s, a huge plane with six engines that looked like they were mounted on the wings the wrong way around. I got to have coffee with a former B-52 pilot, and I got a $2 bill as a souvenir. It's definitely worth the visit. I'm going to see you at the next talk. Bye!